Okay, so this video is going to walk through the exercises for regex at, that we did at the end of lecture one, one, two, and three, also four and five, which are kind of challenge problems that we did not get to. So the first thing we do is we import RE that allows us access to the regex uh, functions that we use for Python. The second thing we did is open up an IO wrapper for tale of two cities.txt. Note that so far nothing has actually been read into memory yet. So no data is actually in here. It's just a wrapper that represents some functionality that we want to do later on. Now we call the read function, which will actually take all the contents of this file and store it into memory in a variable called text. That is a string. All right, so let's get started. One of the f main characters in Tale of Two Cities is Sydney Carton. How many times is the word Carton used? So we'll use re find all because we're trying to find all the instances of Carton. So can type Carton here and then fill that in. And this will run. It is not entirely correct. So let's just see how many times we see the word Carton appears, which is 154. It's not exactly correct um, in this particular case because carton is not super common a word. It might not even show up in terms of difference. But what you should do is use word boundaries before and after to make sure that carton actually appears as its own distinct word. It's not part of a word like cartoner or cartong or I don't know, some other word that begins with carton or maybe has carton inside of it. So we run that and we get 154. So, you know, not a common word. It's not going to change things, but be careful of this. Second thing, I saw people do this. So this makes the match here case insensitive. So it will also match things like carton, carton, as all caps, things like that. Uh, my question to you is, is this what you want? In my opinion, the answer is no. The reason for that is you see we have these extra three most likely what's happening is that a word like milk carton is getting matched and that's not what you want milk carton is obviously not the same thing as sydney carton so you actually don't want it to be ignore case here so you want to get rid of that cool next one here how many times does the word the appear in the novel same thing re dot find all r we want the word boundaries definitely because we don't want words like then or there uh, in order to get for them to match as well because those will if you don't include these boundaries here So let's take a look at that Wrap it around len to find out the length of this list here and we get 7,009 7,393 now, how would you find replace the word? The using regex from tale of two cities, so that's very simple. You just do sub and you put in the regex expression used here before and it has three arguments. The second is what you want to replace it with, which is an empty string. You just kind of want to get rid of it. And the last one is where, like what variable you want to do the matching on. So that is text. You run that and we get our new um, novel here. So let's just say that's cleaned text just to save it. There you go. All right. What percentage of lines in Dickens text contain adverbs? For now, you can classify an adverb as a word that ends in ly. This is actually extremely challenging. I would say this is a very doozy of a question here. This is a little bit different than counting how many times a word appears. That's not what we want. If you read the word, uh, the question carefully, it says what percentage of lines in Dickens text contains adverbs. So all we need to know is how many lines are there in Dickens text. And then for each line, is it does it contain adverbs true or false all right so let's tackle the first part here so how many lines in novel well that's very easy right we can just take we have this uh text file thing here so let's do that text file and we have that function called read lines and we'll do lines equals and then we'll print out how many lines there are what what is going on here remember <clears throat> we have already read through this entire file using this pointer. So by the time read finishes, it is at the end of the text file. Then you call textfile.readlines again, and there's no lines because it's already at the end, right? So we got to do something about that. We need to actually basically copy paste this entire thing over here, then run it. 
now we'll get actually 12,870 lines, which is how many lines there are in that novel. That answers our first question. Now, actually, so let's save that as num lines equals len lines, and that is an integer. We'll save that right there. The next part is how many lines contain adverbs. So let's actually define what is an adverb, right? So it's any word like happily, that's an adverb, um, speedily, that's an adverb, quickly, that's an adverb, right? They all end in ly, so it's just a bunch of char word characters, uh, alphanumeric characters, and then ly. Um, now, cat does not end in ly, and it, it, does, it is a word, but it does not end in ly. So how do we write this as a regex? Well, probably use something like this, right? So a through Z for lowercase, then capital A, capital Z for the uppercase ones. And we want at least at least one character. Let's just say that. Um, I mean, honestly, there should be more, probably at least like three characters or something, but we'll just say at least one character, which is this plus sign right here. So it's at least one occurrence of the stuff here, which is a alphabetical character. And then we need the LY. All right, so we'll use that as our regex expression. And we, right now, we can't actually go through and do find all on lines because find all uses a string. Um, so we could do that with the text variable here. So we could try this and we do get all of our adverbs, which is great, but it's not what the question is asking. We're asking for how, what percent of the lines contain adverbs. So what we'll actually need to do is we'll need to loop through each of the lines and then check if that line is going to have an adverb. So for line in lines, and we'll do re.search to search for an adverb. And then the line is what we're searching through. And is this is going to return a match object, which is going to be none if there is no adverb. And it's going to be a match object. So not none if there is if there is an adverb. So we can do essentially if match, which means if there is a match and it's not none, then let's just say matched lines equals zero. Matched lines increment by one. Okay. That should work. Um, let's run this. Actually, so before that now at the end we'll have a total number of lines that has adverbs so we'll do matched lines divided by num lines percentage and then just as just as a tip always multiply integers by 1.0 if it's sql if it's r if it's python even if you don't need to just just to be safe you get very wonky um behavior sometimes if you don't have two if you don't have two floats dividing or doing these mathematical operations. So we'll take a look at what percentage gives us. 12.79%. All right, so 12.79% of the words, sorry, of the lines will contain adverbs. Cool. Um, keep in mind, there's a much more efficient way that I'll go over in lecture two. But for now, this is a good answer. Um, this would definitely get you full credit. All right, last one. How many times does Charles Dickens use the word word, the pattern word, word, and word in this novel? So, for example, red, bluff, and free. You know, this is a common um, pattern of text and language um, for English, especially blank, blank, and blank. So let's take a look at how we would do that. So uh, essentially, th let's make the, sorry, let's make this first word here. Like, what, what would the regex pattern be for that? So... Let's make a variable called pattern. And I mean, just to get the first word, it's probably going to be A through Z, A through Z. And then, you know, we will define a word as having at least one, if not more. Then we see if it's getting followed by a comma. So we can add in that comma. And then here comes a second word. There's a white space. And then A through Z, A through Z. And then we want at least one occurrence of these characters here. All right, and then again, we have another comma, another white space right here, and then we have the word and. And then we finally, we have A through Z, 
a through z and then to define a word we need at least one or more so at least one occurrence of these characters here all right so that's our pattern and let's try to see how many times we can find this so find all pattern which is above and then we'll use our old text variable which here remember is just giving us a gigantic blob <clears throat> of text and let's take a look boom so let's see jolted rattled and bumped stopped wandered and began credentials entries and memoranda sickness ignorance and want so it looks good all right so we'll say results len results so there are 78 occurrences of this word pattern in charles dickens cool all right as an aside i want to go back to uh, the fourth question which honestly i think is harder than five um, and actually go through a different way to do this um, that's a little bit more quote-unquote pythonic um, a little bit more efficient and probably um, what you'll often see um, in, in the industry in terms of regex matching and kind of feature engineering um, it's using map and filter functions so <clears throat> let's take a look at what those are in here we remember we're going to just copy all this over here so we have how many lines in novel so we have the number of lines in the novel which we'll still need and then we have this variable that's a list of strings one string for each line all right we'll use the same regex expression here so let's just actually let me save that as pattern equals this and now the first thing we're going to do we're going to replace this for loop with a map statement so the map statement essentially is mapping over an iterable which means going through each element of the iterable the iterable in this case is the list of strings so that looks like this map and it takes um a couple arguments so the, the latter one is the actual list that you want to map through or go through and then here is a function you have to give it some sort of function that you want to do to each thing in the list we're going to use what's called a lambda expression um, which is basically a function that doesn't have a name so the first part of this this like nameless function is kind of the parameter we want to pass into it and the parameter we want to pass into it is each line so when we iterate through this lines list we're going to get one variable called line that represents that's a string that represents that line so we'll just name it line and then put a colon and then afterwards is what we want to do inside the function and whatever we have will get returned out so in this case we just want to do our matching so we'll do re dot search and we'll search on the line here now if we just run this we don't get anything um, unique or like you know kind of human readable yet we just get this iterable object at some memory space and what we actually do need to do in Python 3 is cast it into a list so now we have all these um, nuns which means every time the first line of the novel it performed this match and it found that it had uh, no match for adverbs so it returned a none second line whatever that was it performed the regex search didn't find an adverb returned a none it got to this one it did find an adverb it found only so it returned the match object and that's what you see here then it also found another one a few lines later a few lines later and so on and so on so now we have this um results let's call it just results object same thing here now we really only care about like the the match lines right we want to just know how many lines have adverbs so we can take this list which has a lot of nuns and we just want to get rid of all the nuns so we have another uh, python tool called filter that we can use so it works very much the same way as map except in this case so it also takes in two arguments the latter argument is the thing you want to filter on so we want to filter the results first part is also a function um, and we'll also use a lambda function so it, we're going to filter on each result so this will get passed in first this first line this first result which is none will get passed in as result then the next time filter will use this one 
as result, and so on and so on. And in Python, when things are none, they are false. So that's something to remember. It's called um, the truthiness principle in different languages. You know, JavaScript is famous for having kind of wonky truthiness examples, but for Python, none <clears throat> is false. So if I just put result here, basically it'll say, hey, is result none? If it is, this is false. If it's not none, if it's like this object, then it's true. Filter will only keep the things that are true in this statement. All right. So you could, you, you don't need to use result. You could use one plus one, um, one plus one, sorry, one equals one and one equals one is always going to equal one. That's always going to be true. And because one equals one here, one equals one here, one equals one here, it's going to actually just return the list back again. And if you did maybe one equals two, then that's, this is always false. So it's going to return nothing. It's going to return something empty. All right. But right here, you're saying, hey, check result. Is it none? If it's none, throw it away. We don't want it. If it's not none, we do want it. So same thing. You run this and you get a filter iterable. Same thing. You have to cast it to a list to actually see it. And I'll save the results of this list as adverb lines. You run it. And now I have all my results here. If this isn't a string. This is a regex match object, but it will give you all the lines that have this the, the adverbs here. So then your answer is len of adverb lines. And there you go. All right. 